my verb says. Well, There's hello, everybody. My aunt. We are it's still in Matthew. <laughs> and I think we are on Matthew 33. Is that where everybody else has us? I was a little less. I didn't hear her. Matthew. Matthew. I'm sorry, I think yeah. Matthew 33, mine says. Concerning oaths, we were working Matthew. adultery yeah. and divorce for the hot topics last week. <laughs> and unless someone has something else, I think we'll start Matthew 5 33. Yeah. Why don't you do that? We've got lots of. No shortage of Bibles here. I promise you that. Um. So perhaps I'll just read um 533 to the end to six okay. just to get us started okay. and then see where we want to go from there. But just to review, we have gotten through let's see the whole basic story of Jesus' birth, baptism, calling the disciples. And now we're working through the Sermon on the Mount. We finished Beatitudes and anger and adultery. So last week was the whole, if you or your hand's causing you to sin, you should chop it off. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we have. We're still on the Sermon on the Mount. So again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. You have heard it said, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, also go the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard it said, you've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Yeah. There were some Top 10 hits in that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was like uh, Casey Kasem could have read, read that. Um, anybody have thoughts? Favorite phrases in there? I, I have a thought. And that the first thought is, oh my gosh, God, I can't do it. <laughs> I mean, that's an awful lot. Um, and the discipline that that would take to to follow these things is um, enormous. And, you know, I've thought about these things before and I've been critical of myself that I can't um, do better in, in um, keeping my mouth shut and doing the right thing. <laughs> it's hard. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, I would say maybe impossible. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. I think that sometimes 
in this world, people don't always admire you if you are striving to be, as Jesus says, perfect. They look at you as being goody two shoes or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and to overlook the everybody like attacking you if you're mm -hmm. trying to, to do the right thing. Mm hmm. Yeah, these are not, this is not a recipe for material success no, or yes. prestige in this world, I would say. The, the only one, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, the one that I, str I struggle with a lot of these, but the one in particular is when um, I am feeling like someone has um, wronged me or a member of my family. <laughs> um, I, I am so angry at, and, and presently I'm so angry angry yeah. angry that it's really hard for me to like hear this and say hey you gotta like lift them up in prayer lift them up in prayer and it boy it just really I I struggle with that I just yeah. I, I, just, I just struggle I pray you know to God to let, <coughs> let the heaviness out of my heart the anger out of my heart but that is, that is really a challenge. I'm always like, do they want to be lifted in prayer? I'm sure they don't want to be lifted. <laughs> they don't want it, so it's not going to touch them anyway. Like, I have my own like right. snotty conversation in my own head about that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> has anyone ever done that? I had went to a church where we had a challenge for 30 days to pray for someone oh. that you had anger, or resentment, or or hatred. Or, and for the first few weeks, I was just like, Lord, lift up that person. And that's about all I could say. Mm -hmm. Just, and then after three weeks, you could say a few more things. Mm -hmm. And after four weeks, I did, I mm -hmm. felt an easing, but it was a 30 day challenge. Has anyone ever tried something no, like that? No. Pray for someone who, yes, yeah. I have, I have, yeah. What was um, your, and then <laughs> Well, in the church where I was before, um, there was a particular person, a guy who he was almost blind. And that's what made this so hard. But his personality was, um, I don't know, you know, he just kept um, kept on to everybody, wanted to get close to everybody in in a way that was too much. And a lot of people really disliked him and, and wouldn't, you know, um, wouldn't be around him. And so our priest, Bob, that I just mentioned, um, challenged me to, you know, to be nice to him and to, um, to well, at least not to go into a state about disliking him and pray for him. And I did that. And it really changed my attitude toward him from being critical and feeling that he was obnoxious to um, to something different so that I didn't feel like that when he commented or said something or anything. And it really did work, um, but it's hard to do it. Like, you know, just, for it's just hard to do. Yeah. I'm sorry, Carol, I interrupted that's you. What the, were you no, that's say? okay. My question was, so you accepted this 30-day challenge mm -hmm. and you prayed to have this person lifted up. Mm -hmm. Did you notice any, did, did God intercede and was there any change in this other person or was it all in your perception? It was someone who wasn't in my life anymore. So I'm not saying, right. I, so I don't know, but mm -hmm. in my own heart, it was it so it's more it. of a lifting me up to be on the, you know, be above get, yeah. the, 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 the anger. Right. Above yes. the anger, above the temptation of wanting vindication. And, yeah. yeah. It was just a release for me. Different like, focus. Instead different of focusing focus. on the negative, mm -hmm. right. on the exactly. positive. Exactly. There's a level of forgiveness. That right. Has to exactly. That. Or comes from doing that. Yeah. I heard it described as just like forgiveness is like scissors. Like, I just don't want to be this tightly connected to somebody. Mm -hmm. So it was, but yeah, for me, it worked. And I don't know what was going on in that person's life, right. but it was just to try to ease that. Right. Right. And I, I mean, I, but 
do I, do I uh, refuse anyone who wants to borrow from me? <laughs> you can't walk downtown and go, can you? Can you give money to everybody who asks you for money? Right? <laughs> so I tell the kids that giving to poor is a good thing, but instead of giving to peddlers, um, my, and again, my choice is we bring stuff to the food pantry. Um, downtown, you'll see um, the homeless selling the newspapers and, you know, we'll do that. And, but we don't give to peddlers. My mom, however, gives to peddlers. Mm -hmm. if, if her grandkids want to give money, then she will give money for her grandkids. Mm -hmm. Well, this time they go downtown. Sophie was little. My mom made sure to have like a, a stack of money for Sophie. She's, there was a guy on his lunch break <laughs> that Sophie gave money to. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you know, I don't give money to every peddler, but when I do, people will scoff at me and say, well, you know, they're yeah. they're probably going to go spend that money on whatever. And it's like, Ooh, it's they what do. they need. And, and who am I to judge what they feel yeah. they need at that moment? If they need a cigarette, then, you know, or they need a drink. I'm not going to tell them here. I'm giving you this money as long as you don't spend it on, you know. <laughs> have you guys ever been to San Francisco? Oh, high school. <laughs> They'll have signs all over. You know, instead of like, I need a dollar out of work. I've seen signs, not going to lie, money for pot and booze. Not going to yeah. lie. Like, you know, I had a, a friend then who, would, if they saw beggars or stuff like that, instead he would go into like a subway and buy a yeah, sandwich and then the give that to them, right. you know. Like, people, well, I don't know that people too, but... One of my most powerful memories as a little girl is we lived in Jersey. My father walked, worked in New York and we and I went to work one day with him and there was someone on. And so this was way back, like in the seventies, even earlier. And there was someone there. And I remember him specifically saying, come on, I will buy you breakfast. And we walked in at that point, it was one of those horn and hardards. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and the man sits down and my father bought a meal for this man and so it's the same thing it's kind of like if you really I mean this man needed a meal and so I thought okay so I agree with what Jackie says in terms of you know we can designate how we want to give things like to the food pantry our blessing box those kinds of things but it's also you know I, I don't want I don't want it to be my just like it like you said if you want this money to do whatever you're going to do with it then I can't I'm make a value judgment on that. Yeah. So I think it has you. to be a balance because right. I, I can't constantly, you know, give money to everybody. Right. But I do try to impact the agencies, I think, that may, are, are there to help right. people that in, if well, they need food or whatever. You know, when, we, when I've been in Europe, a few, I've been in Europe a few times and there, the peddlers not only peddle themselves, but they send their kids over to, mm -hmm. you know, beg. Mm -hmm. Easiest way to get money. And, you know, at first it would make me angry. Don't use your children in this way. But, mm -hmm. you know, I guess yeah. they're, they're impacted on the, their poverty, too. So, <laughs> yeah. Are there any of these? I don't, I, I feel like. Summer. Go ahead, Leslie. <laughs> that are easier I was than thinking about all of these things in the Sermon on the Mount going all the way back, but Jesus is constantly moving everybody forward rather than, you know, he's he's going back and saying, This is what what and it's he's talking about the law. These are the things that were in the law, eye for an eye, or you know, oaths or whatever, some of these other things. Um or, you know, love your enemies or, or, you know, we are told to love our neighbors and, and hate your enemy in some, some other areas, but we're not, but we need to realize that all of these, Jesus changed everything. He changed every ways that the law was to exclude people to now include them. And we are to include them through love. And when I think of the last statement, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. He's not talking about being perfect 
in everything we do every single day, you know, because we, we all make mistakes. We do things. He's telling us that we need to be loving. We need to be perfect as Jesus was perfect in love in how we are to reach out to uh, our friends, our neighbors, those we don't like, whatever, wherever, you know, whatever we need to do is we need to do it all in the, in, in God, in love. That's beautiful. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had um, an experience when I was pretty young, like junior high or something. My parents um, had a view toward obtaining money that I didn't agree with. And um, once I was, I had my consciousness raised about people who were in prison and people who, who didn't live up to the standards of society. And I said something about it. And my parents said, Oh, they have to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. And it was a big, I said, no, there's, they're people and they suffer. And that's what kind of opened my eyes. I, I, um, I learned that you can include people like that in your prayers and in your thinking. You can't, you know, I was so stuck on trying to help people and try, you know, that I, I kind of went, it affected my mental, um, outlook and I sometimes couldn't stand how I was feeling about so much suffering in the world and um I I know now that you know you can't respond to everything but um there are people who who actually argue for oh not not to think about them and I think that's one way we can we can love people is to be able to 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 raise the consciousness of other people at least we used to drive downtown and have to go through these neighborhoods and see these people. And as a young person, I was just shocked. And um, so I, I think that raising the consciousness of people in some gentle way, I don't know how you can say something, you know, gently, but um, I think it's great that, that I'm talking to a bunch of people whose consciousness is raised about uh, these kind of things. I think reading these so far, it it kind of jogs my memory into a book that we read for in the last year or so, where Jesus is challenging us to go beyond our comfort mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, really loving and giving, we have to push ourselves beyond, and it's beyond the comfort level from the Old Testament. You know, no longer do you eye for an eye or tooth for a tooth you know so it's like that's one of the books we read was talking about everything that jesus taught was was uh pushing us beyond our comfort level which most people don't like to step out of mm -hmm. no i like to be comfortable and in the eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth i think that that was supposed to be a restraint that if someone hurt you, you couldn't massacre their whole village, right? Well, mm -hmm. You could only take to be a, a a sort of a stop, a backstop mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. your revenge. And he's saying you don't even get to take the eye. Yeah. You you actually need to try to love your enemy. Mm -hmm. And so it's just so far beyond a lot of what we've been reading, mm -hmm. even recently in uh, Samuel. I thought it's just a. Comp I read this when I was really struggling um with my faith like was jesus divine where was i like really sort of lost and reading this i just thought there he's so radical mm -hmm. how could someone who had come from where he came from at that time and place <laughs> steeped in the traditions we've been reading about in the old testament and come up with this to me, it was just, this is very impactful to me because it was very faith affirming at the time mm -hmm. that this to me, you know, he couldn't have just picked this up talking to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Suggesting that. So far beyond what, what was so far beyond where we are now, I think. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if we've rolled backwards away. <laughs> but to love yeah. your enemy to give to everyone who wants something from you yeah, yeah. that was unheard of that was it's still unheard of yeah. yeah yeah i think when um my kids were little 
um, and they would play outside, they were, I didn't want them to go into the street, obviously, right? You, you can't go in the street, the ball rolls into the street, you can't go. But my rule was not to not go in the street. The rule was you can't cross the sidewalk. And the reason I said you can't cross the sidewalk is having a rule, it's a safety, right? So when we look, we're not looking, right? Whether we're pushing the limits or we're not paying attention, I have, I don't know how many feet, like five foot buffer, right? I want them to follow the rule. It's there for a reason, but I know I can't put the rule where I want it. And I wonder at some of this, Jesus is challenging us to do certain things, but can't we we should strive for exactly what he says. We should strive for perfection in our love, but is the expectation it's our goal. Do you it's, know what yeah, it's the goal. You know what I goal. mean? Like, yeah, stretching. So he set his goal really high for everyone. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Does it mean we have to do you know what I mean? Like there's so that. And again, I don't want to say look at it as there's leeway or right. the, the goal. I never wanted my kids to cross the sidewalk. That mm -hmm. that was the rule because they didn't want it. But the, they weren't going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. They were going to get hurt if they got to the street. Well, so I, I said to, that. And to mm -hmm. me, the scary thing about being perfect, you know, my kids used to, when they were little, used to say, oh, you're perfect, this, or perfect. And I'd say, don't put me up there because there's only one way I can go. <laughs> I like that. That's that's being aware of yourself that, you know, everything I have ADD and everything that comes into my mind, I can't I can't pay attention to. Um, but but maybe I can pick a couple of things that I can do, um, but be aware that, um, you know, we're not perfect and we're not going to, you know, we're going to respond sometimes negatively and maybe that's an opportunity to, you know, to, um, to consider, maybe that gets our attention. Wait a minute. Um, why am I, you know, I feel frustrated that I can't do anything, um, significant. I really don't know what I can do to help even the, in the church and, um, I've always had a feeling of wanting to, you know, participate in some positive way. And um, so praying and um, keeping in touch with, with some people, and, you know, but it's like part of me, I'm sure there are other people of you and, and people, you know, that are frustrated that we can't do more, um, that our lives demand things that we can't, you know, put aside. Um, but there's there's something that we can do and i struggle with that i just feel like though that you know if you just try not to set your goal your your goals too large i don't want to say too high but too much take don't take on more than you can chew like my mother used to say <laughs> that's great take the little goals mm -hmm. and you know I think it's really true. If you impact one or two people, it kind of sets up a domino effect where, you know, maybe that person will remember what you did and do, you know, pay it forward, whatever. I'm just thinking about the baptism vows here. Whenever there's a child being baptized and we all stand up and we don't say, I will do these things. We say, with God's I help, help, I yes. will. Mm -hmm. And I, Sometimes when I'm in a good frame of mind and I'm reading this, instead of feeling like there's no way I can ever do this. So, mm -hmm. oh man, I feel bad about that. Sometimes I think this, if this is my standard, knowing I could not do that without God's That's help, cool. it sort of keeps me in a place of supplication mm -hmm. and humility. Like in order to even try to be achieving these things, I would have to stay in a place of prayer. Mm -hmm. I think because mm -hmm. only through God's help could I even start to I couldn't even have done my 30 day challenge without the community around me. Like someone had to step that challenge and we had friends saying, how's it going? <laughs> and even just to do that, I had to stay in, in a place of prayer. Um, so I kind of sometimes read this as just, okay, 
obviously you're not going to do this alone. Mm -hmm. And so you can either, I can either get discouraged or I can say, I need to lean on community and I need to stay in prayer and I need to keep asking for guidance. And in, in that place, it's not a bad place to be. Right. I think. And I but, think this is the goal. Mm -hmm. but there are benchmarks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I wanted to be right more involved in church so I had just showing up was my first goal and then staying a whole service mm -hmm. was my next goal <laughs> now I can come and stay a whole service which was a big benchmark yeah mm -hmm. then my next benchmark was doing a reading one time a month well I was it last week or the week before I signed up and I was like my <laughs> you're up <laughs> yeah. um so i don't feel bad i couldn't do you know does the church need help in the kitchen sure yeah. that's a far goal um when i can cook dinner and clean up at home then i'll work but you know what i mean like i think we need to look at these as the goal but what are the benchmarks and the benchmarks for everybody at this table would be different mm -hmm. and with each thing i mean that's not just one thing he said there <laughs> okay like that that's a really good idea really what are the benchmarks like i said my first benchmark was just show up at church mm -hmm. and like i said that took a couple months i think you've done a lot more than that one benchmark your children are so impressive to be I, mm -hmm. so committed to already to this church mm -hmm. that you know i think that is a huge goal that you've accomplished they, and you woke up from your surgery yeah. i yeah. mean that was a yeah. pretty big one just responding to a text like we just wanted you to wake up jackie you know and, it, <laughs> and you you're doing great. it didn't go the surgery itself didn't go perfect mm -hmm. i there is an artery yeah. issue well, more than an issue um it yeah sometimes when i think about it like yeah cow <laughs> i think because my mom had died i mean my seizure was the day before the funeral um so i you know, my reaction was, I don't have time for this. Mm -hmm. you know, like, <laughs> the whole thing is just now setting in, right. like, holy. Get this over with and move on. <laughs> yeah, well, tomorrow. Right. You know, can I, can I keep going? But the doctors didn't think that way. <laughs> not one agenda. Thank, thank God. You know, thank God. And the multiple neurosurgeons were like, mm, can't, can't touch that. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the Jewish neurosurgeon who's like, I got this. <laughs> I got this. Um, but yet, you know, even coming back to church was not Mike or I. Um, we we raise our kids in faith, but church was not our jam. It was, and then it wasn't, and then it was, and then it wasn't. <laughs> but Allie, and I think it's because of her age and friends at school, can we go back to church? Mm. And then said my mom died i said i had a tumor my sister was diagnosed with skin melanoma skin cancer oh my gosh, your poor family. There, there was a lot and really fast and Ellie's like mom that church thing <laughs> you think we could get to that <laughs> but look at that one kid how it impacted the whole family mm -hmm. yep. even my yep. dad my dad came last week because mike and i were out of town and the kids were like well, why can't we go to church i was like oh okay I'm like, my dad will take, you know, mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, maybe I'll come again. And I'm like, oh, yeah, are you sure? Yeah, it's pretty liberal. Sophie, Sophie was at mm -hmm. Alkali that day. I said, where are your mom and dad? She goes, they're in Texas. I said, did you Texas? know what you sell? Was it Texas? No. <laughs> no. Carbondale. Illinois, England. State competition for um, science fair. Ellie made it down to Maybe I misunderstood. And got a goal. I know you were at some sporting events. So you came by yourself? Did you drive yourself? And she yeah. said, no, my, I guess my granddad brought me or something. I don't yeah. know. But he said, and like, <laughs> I didn't hear all of church, but I, I did hear part of the homily on the car ride home. And um, my dad's not very liberal. <laughs> But I had and I oh. commented to him that it's pretty liberal. Oh, I saw you have a pride mask coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like, what? again, he made a joke during the homily, and my dad likes that it's not. And I was like, oh, okay then. But just look at what Allie opened to mm -hmm. yeah. all of us. Yeah. Did she pick this church, or did you guys 
Well, she wanted to go back to Catholic church because that's what she knows. We were in Catholic school. I have issue with Catholic church. You don't have to go. Oh, no, no. No. (laughs) (laughs) They went to Catholic school for a number of reasons which had to do with the school. Um, so I told, you know, my kids have known all along, like, well, this is my thought with this church and this is what I don't like about the, you know, um, and I told her if Catholic is what she, I will take her to Catholic church. These are my decisions. These are my reasons. Mm-hmm. You, you are, you can make your own. Um, but her and Sophie together said, I want to go to a church that everybody can go to. All my friends could go to. Um, mm-hmm. so I said, well, that's not Catholic. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Exactly. So we've been here years and years and years ago. And then, so we tried it. They're all in. Which is, look at what it opened. That one benchmark about getting us closer. Like, everybody now, so all my kids have always had Bibles. Like, the Action Bible, the Children's Bible, the Picture Bible. Other than Danny, which he doesn't like to read, it's too much. Mm-hmm. They all have their own. I want an adult Bible. So they're reading the Bible and incredible. Oh, that's great. Yeah. See? You and know, it's great too when it comes stop. from a what do we what we want to pull people, not push them. Mm-hmm. 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 Like like come come right. in. Right. Be welcome. We and went to church because we had it. two growing up. Which mm-hmm. most people I mean, that's how Right, exactly. We, we ate the dinner my parents put on the plate too because yeah. we had to. Yeah. Um, th- this stopped. like I said last week, I just figured we we're out of town, they don't have to come. I, it just didn't cross my mind yet. I did, I knew my dad would bring them. It's not that he won. And I think, I think what he liked best about church though isn't the joke. I don't even know what joke he said, just <laughs> he was watching his grandkids up there. Yeah, I mean, really, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's super mm-hmm. cool. Should we go on just a little bit? Yeah. We, get, we, we kind of got diverted, huh? <laughs> well, I think it's great discussion. Yeah. This is these are not easy things to live. Um if someone wants to read chapter six, if we read like one through fifteen, we would get the Lord's okay. Prayer. I can which do I it. think is thank you, Barb. And I have the met the message, so it'll be oh, interesting. Oh, that's the interesting because the Lord's Prayer from the message. Um, and the Hi, title on my on on this is the world is not a stage <laughs> be especially careful when you are trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it it might be good theater but the god who made you won't be applauding when you do something for someone else don't call attention to yourself you see you've seen them in action i'm sure play actors i call them treating prayer meeting and street corner alike as a stage, acting compassionate as long as someone is watching, playing to the crowds. They get applause, true, but that's all they get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks. Just do it, quietly and unobtrusively. That is the way your God, who conceived you in love, working behind the scenes, helps you out. And when you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for stardom. Do you think God sits in a box seat? (laughs) Do find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense his grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors Mm -hmm. who are prayer ignorant. They are full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are, set the world right, do what's best as above, so below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're ablaze in beauty. 
Yes, yes, yes. In a prayer, there is a connection between what God does and what you do. You can't get forgiveness from God, for instance, without forgiving others. If you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's part. When you practice some appetite appetite denying discipline to better concentrate on God, don't make a production out of it. It might turn you into a small time celebrity, but it won't make you a saint. If you go into training inwardly, act normally outwardly. Shampoo and comb your hair, brush your teeth, wash your face. God doesn't require attention getting devices. He won't overlook what you are doing. He'll reward he'll re, he'll reward you well. Wow. Thank you, mm. Barb. The Lord's Prayer and the message is it fascinating. Is <laughs> yes. Keep us alive with three square meals. <laughs> I guess well, that's what it means. Mm. Our daily bread, right? Really, it breaks it down to what are we saying? What really do we say? Yeah, you know. Well, I think this whole thing, this whole section was like talking about you. your aim is to do good without bringing a lot of attention, attention to, to your it. back to yourself. Yeah, that's right. right. You know, mm -hmm. you need to do this from your heart and not mm -hmm. for the not applause. For show. Not yeah. for show. I uh, stopped by the food pantry on my way here. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, for that. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Are you doing it for the people in food camp? You know, I think sometimes too, when we do stuff for somebody, um, you know, I took Carol to the doctor the I'm just making stuff out. <laughs> I took her to the doctor the other day. Okay. It's no longer about Carol. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like right. it's about me. Right. Well, or am I not shaming, but like, oh, you need help. You can't do it without me. We like almost putting you down, right? Putting you below I mean, me. I alone can fix it. Yeah, <laughs> right. I had a friend who was a minister, and she said, "As soon as someone gives you a mic, <laughs> and it, because it starts to be like, oh, and actually, you know, I've given just a couple sermons, and I'm terrified whenever I do it." But at one point I was speaking and at home, I can't get a word in edgewise. You know? <laughs> and for a moment, there was like 60 people all looking at me like, oh, what's she going to say next? Mm -hmm. And there was a moment where I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to. Mm -hmm. And she said that when you, because it's what she did for a living, that she preached every week. Mm -hmm. And she said, as soon as you're up there with a mic, it starts to become about you. Well, look mm -hmm. what I can do. Mm -hmm. and she's like and that is so destructive to like everything you're supposed to be doing it's supposed to be not like how can people get closer to god how can god speak to these but how can you stop people from saying well that was wonderful i know how smart you are i mean you're not doing it for those comments afterwards mm -hmm. absolutely that's not but I, like, that's what destroys what right. you are giving from yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Like when I went out, when I just, you know, was out in California helping my husband through his chemo and stuff, people would come back and say, oh, you're an angel and you're going to be. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's it's just need, he needed help. I yeah. you know. What can I do? I think it's different, though, than from just doing it and then saying, ah, my, um, Sophie has a severe peanut allergy. Um, if we were to eat at somebody's house, we would have to ask about, mm -hmm. you know, some stuff, read uh, the labels on boxes mm -hmm. for cross. It's not just, we don't eat nuts. We don't eat anything with cross-contamination and there's cold. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, there are some people whose houses we go to, it is very well known by everybody there. Well, if Sophie is coming, I always make sure it is so important to me that we only have stuff she can have. And I mm -hmm. would only do this if... Mm -hmm. Okay, then just don't. We don't need to cut. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, you're doing a favor, but at some point when you keep boasting yourself up, you're not doing mm -hmm. it. It's not about keeping her safe. Like, I'd rather not go. It's no longer about keeping her safe. It's about what this other person did. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's when it comes in, not that you help somebody or you said something. It's when you continue, when you let people know what you did. Yeah. 
you know, when it's no longer an action, when you verbalize, I did. Well, good for you. <laughs> well, well, I guess in those kinds of situations, Jackie, it's interesting because I would look at it like if I said, oh, I helped Diane out by, I don't know, bringing her to a doctor's appointment. And if I shared that with um, Carol, my intent might be that Diane in the future may need, help. may need help. And so now I've had this conversation as a way of saying it. Hey, it's and okay. so not like patting me on the back, but a way to alert other people that this may be something right. we need to be aware right. of. So it's, it's a like little that. bit of thinking. So it's not bragging like, oh, look what I did, but like, it's, it's putting a, it out there. It's a thing. simple thing that I, that I could do, and Carol mm -hmm. could do it too. It's, I like that. No, I I didn't think of it that way. I yeah. like thinking of it that yeah. way. I think yeah. the motivation is so important. Like, are right. you, yes. Yes. are you being called to do this thing because you're called? This is God wanting it. Like, or are you doing it so other people see it? Right. And it's mm -hmm. not easy no to know the difference mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it yeah. sounds like we can like joke about people praying, making a production on a street corner, but I think it can be, for me, I think it can be subtle because mm -hmm. everyone likes to be told, oh, you, that was nice what you did. Mm -hmm. No one doesn't want that. <laughs> I don't I know. Know. And I think that's a great way to think. Like I said, I just don't yeah, no, think no. that way. Well, and you know, a lot of times in my younger life, I used to think I want to live my life in a way that people look at me and say, I don't know what it is about that person, but I want to be like her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. she seems so calm and, mm -hmm. you know. No, but, it should, it's a good thing to strive for. I read a book by Francis Collins, who was head of the NIH. He also led mm -hmm. the government uh, part of sequencing the whole genome. So he was a geneticist, mm -hmm. but until recently head of the NIH. And he wrote a book about faith which if you're a sciencey person is kind of mm. interesting. But he said that he was a physician, just a doctor, and he would have to give people diagnosis. And sometimes they were, you know, this, mm. this is a terminal illness you have. And he said he would notice a difference if there were some people who, not that anyone reacted well, but some people could find a lot more peace with that and would mm. actually start to sort of he, he said he could just tell the difference in the mm. outcome. And then he started to realize those were some of those people are people of faith. Mm. And it strengthened his own faith. And this is why he wrote the book mm. because he could tell not in so they weren't preaching at him. Mm -hmm. They weren't Bible thumping at him or threatening what no, would happen just, if he didn't have faith. They were just this example of living through something difficult with grace mm -hmm. and just seeing that strengthened his own faith. But I'm sorry, Carly. Sorry, no, I was just, something. Yeah, they're just, jogged my mom memory from what you were saying about this what the guy said is that when i was working in hospice when people would finally be going into their final decline um we would have patients that we would have to sedate because they would have what was called terminal restlessness mm -hmm. they would be moving and yeah. crying out and and then there would be these other people that were calm and just kind of slipped away and our and our chaplain our hospice chaplain said he was of the belief that the people that were in terminal restlessness were fighting death because they weren't right Ready. with God. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. yeah, you might enjoy the Francis Collins book. I'll yeah. look it up for you. Okay. But yeah, he's as someone with a science background mm -hmm. who, when I was going through my big doubt phase, <laughs> reading mm -hmm. Matthew, I read that and I thought that was because I think sometimes people want to set up a dichotomy that you can be sciencey. Or you can be someone yeah. of faith, and and yeah, I think that's doubt. not big necessarily doubt. true. That all kind of goes together. Big doubt, well. Just we have to like the curveball. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about the big doubt, and I've had a lot of faith crises. But when I really look at it critically, my faith crises have never been about my core faith values. It's always been about the stuff that people have added on top of it. Mm -hmm. that's, oh, that's what I fascinating. Was, this past week they just proved that the Big Bang Theory isn't what they thought it was. <laughs> so <laughs> that's more reason that we don't know where we're from or what, you know. Right. And you know, when my kid when my one of my children was little, they say, Mom, why do you even believe in all that stuff? And I said, because the alternative is so hopeless and horrible mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know like it's black it's nothing there 
And I said, when I'm dead, nobody, I won't know if I'm wrong. <laughs> I kind of love what you just said, because I feel like Sermon on the Mount in some ways is those basic values, right? Without mm-hmm. all of the mm-hmm. other, right. this is sort of like, you know, the bullet points for mm-hmm. Jesus, right. which I, I kind of love reading this. Mm-hmm. It's very yeah. affirming for me. I just, mm-hmm. you know, in my faith, my core faith, I feel like there is something beyond us. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Is it Jesus? Is it God? It's something bigger than us. Something that can affect us if we, you know, are aware of it. Um, it's got to be pretty strong. Look what the Ukrainians are going through. I know. Yeah. And oh. they took time out to Thanks. celebrate their, their Greek Easter. What a yeah. group. They did. Great segue for me. So I need help. I was going to say. Okay. Um, we, so you saw that we did the Exodus drive. We have a Ukrainian mom and her child. I don't know, boy or girl that have arrived and we need to get the stuff to them tomorrow, Thursday in the Burbank, Oak Lawn area. So I cannot fit everything in my car. I was looking again today. So I, if someone is available to help. What time? Get, well, I'll work. I'll give me your phone number, Barb. I'll okay. call you later. Okay, today. We'll be online. So why don't we do that after I stop recording? Oh, okay. No, no, no. Okay. It's okay. I just don't want your phone number online oh. Oh. for the world. Oh. But But no, everyone online could help the Ukrainians. Yeah. <laughs> um. Is there anything else you want to say? No, I just want to protect your privacy. No, I appreciate that. I have something. I I have something I'd like to say. Um, Do I come across like that? I know that I share things from my life and things that that work for me. And are they are they things that sound like I'm trying to tell people what to do? Oh no! no. They just explain the experience. Yeah, yeah. Boastful I, anyway. I, I like what you share, Mary. I, I think one, it gives me insight into who you are, which I really enjoy getting to know you better. Um, no, I no, no, I hope you heard like everybody in the room was like, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, well, shared wisdom. Shared wisdom. I don't, yeah. I don't mean to do that. I just want to say I don't mean to to do that. I'm I'm just I'm talking about things that have helped me. That's really, I guess, what I'm trying to do. No, and and it's, a, it's very encouraging. It's yeah. encouraging to all of us, I think, to to see where you where you've grown and where you what you've done, and, and that we understand you a little more. And we also it helps us to understand God a little more, how He works in people's lives. Yeah. Well, certainly. Well, I think we're going to end it here. Um, If anyone's interested in helping drive things tomorrow, you can reach out to the church number and we'll hook you up with Barb. Perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you. It was so good to see everybody. Love you all. Take care. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.